So we have an f of x right over here, and it's defined piecewise. For x less than 0, f of x is x plus 1. For x is greater than or equal to 0, f of x is cosine of pi x. And we want to evaluate the definite integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx. And you might immediately say, well, which of these which of these versions of f of x am I going to take the antiderivative from? Because from negative 1 to 0, I would think about x plus 1. But then from 0 to 1, I would think about cosine pi x. And if you were thinking that, you're thinking in the right direction. And the way that we can make this a little bit more straightforward is to actually split up this definite integral. This is going to be equal to the definite integral from negative 1 to 0 of f of x dx plus plus the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. Now why was it useful for me to split it up this way? And in particular to split it up, split the interval from negative 1 to 1, split into two intervals from negative 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. Well I did that because 0, x equals 0 is where we switch, where f of x switches from being x plus 1 to cosine pi x. So if you look at the interval from negative 1 to 0, f of x is x plus 1. So f of x here is x plus 1. And then when you go from 0 to 1, f of x is cosine pi x. So cosine of cosine of pi x. And so now we just have to evaluate each of these separately and add them together. So let's take the definite integral from negative 1 to 0 of x plus 1 dx. Well, let's see, the antiderivative of x plus 1 is Antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. I'm just incrementing the exponent and then dividing by that value. And then plus x, and you could view it as I'm doing the same thing. If this is x to the 0, it'll be x to the first, x to the first over 1, which is just x. And I'm going to evaluate that at 0 and subtract from that, it evaluated at 1. Uh, sorry, it evaluated at negative 1. And so this is going to be equal to, if I evaluate it at 0, let me do this in another color. If I evaluate it at 0, it's going to be 0 squared over 2, which is, well, I'll just write it, 0 squared over 2 plus 0. Well, all of that's just going to be equal to 0. Minus, it evaluated at, it evaluated at negative 1. So minus negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared over 2 plus negative 1. So negative 1 squared is just 1. So it's 1 half plus negative 1. 1 half plus negative 1 is, or 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. So all of that is negative 1 half. But then we're subtracting negative 1 half. 0 minus negative 1 half is going to be equal to positive 1 half. So this is going to be equal to positive 1 half. So this first part right over here is positive 1 half. And now let's evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine pi, I don't need that first parentheses, of cosine of pi x dx. What is this equal to? Now, if we were just trying to find the antiderivative of cosine of x, it's pretty straightforward. We know that the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is equal to cosine of x cosine of x. But that's not what we have here. We have cosine of pi over pi x. So there is a technique here. You could call it u substitution. You could say u is equal to pi x. If you don't know how to do that, you could still try to think about, think this through, where we could say, all right, well, maybe it involves sine of pi x somehow. So the derivative with respect to x of sine of pi x would be what? Well, we would use the chain rule. It would be the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside, or sine of pi x with respect to pi x, which would be cosine of pi x, and then times the derivative of the inside function with respect to x, so it would be times pi. Or you could say the derivative of sine pi x is pi cosine of pi x. Now, we almost have that here, except we just need a pi. So what if we were to throw a pi right over here, but so we don't change the value, we also multiply by 1 over pi. So if you divide and multiply by the same number, you're, just, you're not changing its value. 1 over pi times pi is just equal to 1. But this is useful. This is useful because we now know that pi cosine pi x is the derivative of sine pi x. So this is all going to be equal to, 
this is equal to one. Let me, let me take that one over pi. So this is equal to one over pi times, now we're going to evaluate. So the antiderivative here, we just said is sine, sine of pi x. And we're going to evaluate that at one and at zero. So this is going to be equal to one over pi. One over pi, not pi. My hand is not listening to my mouth. One over pi times sine of pi, sine of pi, minus sine of, minus sine of pi times zero, which is just zero. Well, sine of pi, that's zero. Sine of zero is zero. So you're gonna have one over pi times zero minus zero. So this whole thing is just all going to be equal to zero. So this first part was one half. This second part right over here is equal to zero. So the whole definite integral is gonna be one half plus zero, which is equal to one half. So all of that together is equal to one half.